Hello everybody, in this video we will discuss how we can import data in SPSS using an Excel file that we have already collected our data and we also see how we can edit our data using the data editor. Assuming that we have uh, performed some sort of survey and we have already collected our data into an Excel file as you can see here, there is a sample file with a number of uh, cases and uh, they have been organized uh, as variables in columns. You can see here that we have collected data from some employees. The data are uh, totally fictional. They do not reflect any real case, but we're using them just for the case of uh, the demonstration. So in this file, we have collected ID numbers, the birth dates, registration dates of the uh, specific persons, their ranking in their profession, whether they are managers, employees, mid-level, senior level executives, their profession. And as you can see, we have also some values that have not been filled for some reason. So those are being considered as missing values. The gender could be either male or female training, whether the person is performing some kind of exercise on a weekly basis, the height, the weight, smoking, whether someone is smoking or not, or was a smoker in the past. And for the rest, we have collected some data uh, re reflecting their uh, scores in uh, exams in English, mathematics, writing, whether they live within the state or not, how many minutes do they take to commute, if they commute, if they commute or not, uh, how many hours uh, do they sleep every day, and what is their working time. So, in general, it is a, uh, a set of data that is very common when we perform a survey, a field survey, asking uh, customers, uh, students, employees, some uh, personal or uh, some other uh, details relevant to our study. Assuming that we have collected our data here, the next step is to use this file in order to import the data into our uh, SPSS data editor. The process to import the Excel data file is very simple. So we go, first of all, we open the uh, SPSS data editor and from the file menu, we select the import data option. As you can see, we have a variety of options uh, for the format of the data file. In our case, we use the Excel, but we can also have a CSV, a text, or some other file formats from other software. If we pick the Excel and we select the specific file, SPSS will try to recognize parts of our file related to the variables. So it will identify whether we have numeric uh, data or uh, date format or uh, binary data and it will advise accordingly uh, on how to interpret those variables. So if we wait for a few moments to load the file, we will see that there will be uh, a dialogue that will suggest how to treat those values. And we will see on the data view, the data that will be uh, coming from our Excel file, and on the variable view, the variables that will have been generated from our data file. So, here we have the outcome of the processing that SPSS has already performed for the Excel file. As you can see, uh, there is 
an automated identification of the nature or the type of the variables. The first is numeric, so you can see that this icon represents a scale variable and this is a categorical, that's why it's depicted like this. If we perform a preliminary check here and we see that there is no significant uh, problem with our data, then we proceed to the next step. So first we, we are looking on the data set here to see whether we can specify something that looks a little bit weird or not matching with our original file. If we think that everything is OK, then we press the OK button and then the data are being imported in our data editor. Of course, the automatic import uh, has some problems because as you can see here, the height has a number of decimal points that uh, we would not like to display here or use them in, in the calculations. So we need to perform a second uh, level analysis on our data and variables. First of all, we cross-check our data view to see whether all the data are in more or less in an appropriate format. So if we scroll to the right, we see that the numerical variables uh, define a lot of decimal points that we need to uh, control that. All the rest look a little bit uh, in accordance uh, to our original file. So let's switch to the variable view in order to check the variable definition that SPSS has automatically uh, set for us. As you can see here, SPSS has defined 20 variables. Every name corresponds to the first uh, row of our Excel file. So the first thing is to check whether the names are what we are uh, expecting. It looks like that they're okay. The next step is to check whether the type is correct or not. For example, the ID is numeric and then we check from the details whether the width is something that we are fine with, the decimal places, and for all those variables, for the numeric ones, I think that we would like to reduce the decimal points to be up to two. So we are editing those fields here and modify the decimal points to maximum two. If there is a date, of course, there is no need to set any decimal points, or if we have a string variable, there is no need to place any decimal points. The next thing is when we have some variables that are binary, for example, the gender, which is 0 and 1, we could change here the values and set the labels for 0 and 1. So if zero is male, we can check the gender variable and edit the values. And for the value zero, we can add the label male. We can add it. And for the value one, we can enter the label female. And if we add it and press OK, then we will see that for the gender variable, in the data view, we will have, if we scroll down, and as you can see, it's still 0, 1, but if we switch the view to show the labels, then we can see the labels instead of the numbers. We can do the same for any variable that is not numeric, but 
it's nominal or ordinal. So it's not scale variable. The missing values for the moment uh, we're not going to handle somehow. We will discuss it on a later video. But as you can see, for some variables, there is some missing value at some cases. And we need to treat them appropriately. For example, we need to decide whether we will fill some value and which value we should fill there. Or else, uh, it would be better to exclude them from our analysis because they will make our results a little bit biased. For the time being, we let it as it is and we proceed to the columns that, as we said, define how we can see the variables in data editor. So if we shrink that here, you will see that the column size decreases or increases. And of course, we can align to the ref, to the right or to center any variable. And this is related again to how we view the data in the data editor. The next task is to check whether the variables here have been appropriately uh, identified either as scale ones or nominal or ordinal. For example, the gender variable gets only 0 and 1, but it's not a numeric. It is, a, it is not a scale variable, but it is a nominal variable because the two categories, male and female, cannot be ordered. We examine the rest and we want to be sure that what the SPSS has decided is correct. So, the date, uh, the birth date here, as you can see, is a date. So, we can either let it as a scale or uh, ordinal. However, the registration date, which is uh, as a string is defined as a string here, it is set as a nominal. So the combination of the type uh, and the measure is important here. So as you can see, the ranking here, even if it is numeric, it does not have any, uh, any kind of order. So the categories here, one, two, three, four, could be replaced by a keyword like manager, employee, mid-level manager, and so on. So we let it as a nominal. So we, the same way, we examine all the rest according to our survey results. And the final, uh, the final column here indicates whether the variable is input independent one in our research or it's the outcome or the dependent one. For the time being, this is not a survey that we have performed in order to measure something. So if the dependent was the working time or the sleep time or something else, then we might better change the role here to reflect uh, the variable more accurately. So for the time being, those variables have been uh, placed appropriately. So now we're ready to start analyzing our data. So this is the first one of the approaches to uh, generate a set of data into SPSS by importing a data file that has been generated by another uh, data source. Another way is to enter data directly into the data editor by double clicking and added new cases here below or inserting cases at any any row by clicking the number of the case and selecting by right clicking or our mouse, insert cases. So if we insert case here, 
you see that the rest of the cases are being uh, moved one position uh, below. So we can play around with all the data uh, and of course whenever we have large volumes of data it's not very easy to scroll down or sc uh, visually inspect the data so for that we use the tools or the scripting uh, language of SPSS and of course we can export our data set as soon as we have finished with our analysis we can export it in a variety of uh, formats including Excel, CSV, text or some other uh, formatting uh, files so this is a way uh, that we uh, uh, follow in order either to import data from another source or generate our own sources. Thank you very much.